There's a language that we are going to use to keep track of orders of growth and decay. And because we're talking about such orders, we're going to use an O in this language. It's a big O, a really big O. This is a big idea. You got to use a big O. Don't use a little O. What does this big O mean? Well, it kind of means a trash can. A great big cosmic trash can in which you can put trash. Now, what's going on here? What is this? Well, let's do a few examples just to get the idea. Nothing too formal yet. Consider, first of all, what happens in the asymptotic limit as x is small, as x is going to zero, then what do we know about cosine of x? We know from its Taylor series that it is 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the 4th over 4 factorial minus x to the 6th over 6 factorial plus uh, keep going, keep going, etc., etc. But instead of saying etc., etc., we're going to use big O to take care of the trash. So we're going to replace that dot 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 with big O of x to the 8th. And what that means is that all of those higher order terms are all, roughly speaking, of order x to the 8th or higher, or more properly, that everything that appears in that tail is going to be less than x to the 8th times some constant. Now, we could have said the cosine of x is 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the 4th over 4 factorial minus x to the 6th over 6 factorial plus big O of x to the 7th. And that would have been perfectly fine. That's a true statement, a bit less precise than saying big O of x to the 8th, but nevertheless true. Could we have said x to the 6th? Yes, that would also be correct, although less precise. And since we've already got an x to the sixth term in there, we might as well just bundle it together and say the cosine of x is 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial minus big O of x to the sixth. Now, what about that minus sign? Do we need that? Could we make it a plus sign? Yeah, it doesn't matter. In fact, if we just want the leading order term, we can say the cosine of x in the limit as x goes to zero is really just one plus some other stuff. And that other stuff is in big O of x squared. That means that all those other terms are of order x squared and higher. Now that's an example where x is really small, but we can also consider the case where x is really big and going to infinity. Consider the function log of quantity one plus one over x. As x gets really, really large, that one over x is very small. We recall the Taylor series for log of one plus smiley, right? That smiley minus smiley squared over two plus smiley cubed over three. Well, plugging in one over x gives us one over x minus one over two x squared plus one over three x cubed plus dot, dot, dot. But instead of saying dot, 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 we're going to use big O and say that all those remaining terms are in big O of x to the minus fourth. That means that everything that follows is less than some constant divided by x to the fourth. Again, in the limit as x goes to infinity. Got to be careful with that one. Okay, what else can we do with this? Well, we can take those first three terms and then add a big O of x to the minus third. That would be accurate, but redundant because we've already got a one over three x cubed in there. We could absorb that into that big O term and get one over x minus one over two x squared plus big O of x to the minus three. If we only care about the leading order term, we can say that log of quantity one plus one over x is one over x plus some other stuff, that other stuff being in big O of x to the minus two. These are a couple of examples of how big O works. It's just notation to help control the and so on and so on terms in a series in this example. Now, these are examples. It's not a definition. You need a formal definition of what it means to be big O of something, and here's what it is. This big O is not itself a function. It is a class of functions. 
the definition of big O of x to the n is the class of all functions f of x such that f of x is less than or equal to some constant c times x to the n. Now this is for some constant c. What constant c is it? Whatever. We don't care. It's just some constant. Now we do care about a few details. One detail we care about is because this is an inequality, a less than or equal sign, we better have everything in absolute values so that negatives don't mess stuff up. The other thing that we care about greatly is that we pay attention to the limit as x goes to a. So being in big O really depends on whether you're talking about, say, x going to zero, or x going to infinity, or x going to some other a. You've got to state that. Okay, now, that's the definition of what it means to be in big O of x to the n. Sometimes, sometimes we're going to care about big O of log of x, or big O of e to the minus x, or some other function other than a monomial term. So we can modify this definition slightly to say that big O of g of x consists of all functions f such that f is less than or equal to some constant c times g as x goes to a, everything in absolute value, some constant c. Whew, that definition is a mouthful, and it's unintuitive. You've not really seen things like this before. It's kind of weird. You're going to be tempted to say, do I really need this? Oh, no, you really do need this. Be sure to learn this definition right now, as it is going to animate everything that we do henceforth.